Hit, hit recording yeah. so we can. From the moment that I got on this Zoom, you were like, something's yeah, going you, on you, under you the surface did. of the tortorich skin. Right. First off, we're recording this on Thursday at three o'clock. Yeah. Right. Eastern. Um, we have been trying to get this house in order for, you know, Tallulah's having, there's a big graduation party here for her. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. So it's a, it's a dual party. But you know, nothing makes you get everything, you know, we've been moving it with this house and putting it together and the whole thing since yep. we moved in. But you know, just, you know, working on everything. And I've been out in the yard with a shovel for you know, whenever I'm not on the phone with a consult or You're doing, doing a podcast, I have a shovel in my hands. <laughs> it, look, you can tell I'm, I'm wet. I'm, I'm, I'm wet. You are. And this, you know, this morning is no different. Woke up this morning, you know, there, there's grass cutting, there's, there's weeding and edging that needs to be done because we have to plant this whole yard. This whole yard is like me and Serena and, you know, we have a lot of workers and helpers, but, I'm out there every day covered in dirt and mud and everything else. And right before his pie cut, I, I just put a clean hat on because the hat I had on was just splattered with dirt and mud. And I splashed water in my face. And here we are. The reason I even bring up any of that, I'll tell you that to tell you this. I, I th That's sexy that you're out in the yard doing yard stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like that. that's very sexy. Yeah, I've been doing that my, my whole life. I've been I, I like getting out and doing that stuff. But the last time I just realized this right before the mics went hot, right before we, you could tell mm -hmm. when I came in, I was still flustered. I still had sweat pouring yeah. off, even though I, I threw water on my face. Um, yeah. The last time I ate was at around 7.30 last evening. Oh my gosh. So people talk about intermittent fast. Now, by the way, I didn't mean to fast today at all. Um, got up early this morning. I knew we had X number of things I had to do. I had to do a phone call in there. So I had to stop for you know a while to do a phone call, went back, did some more work, had to do another. And by the way, when I do the phone calls, I just start walking down the street. If it's a half an hour call, I walk for a half an hour. If it's an hour call, I walk for an hour. Here, you, get a, you get a good phone signal on your street. You can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, um, I wish I had a phone signal. We in the country now. Our, so Anna, between phone calls and working out in the yard. Mm -hmm. I'm at 25,000 steps today. <laughs> That's so, a lot of steps. So fuck, you, fuck you 10,000 steps in a day. So yeah, yeah I'm at 10,000 steps can bite me. So what do they say every 10,000? I'm only to 6,600 steps, but it's only noon. Okay, well, yeah. I'm at three o'clock. So and by the way, what do they say for every 10,000 steps, like five miles? So five, 10, I'm at like 12 to 13 miles of walking, yeah. being on my feet today. So just to give you an idea, yeah, I haven't eaten yet. And it, it, this is not by design. I woke up, I, I meant to eat, but Serena goes, we need this, that, 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 boom, let's get it going because I'm on a schedule. And, you know, when people are expecting you to call them at a certain time and you have to start a pod podcast at a certain time, you're on a schedule. Right. Now, there are certain things that has to be done before this party tomorrow. Right. There's you know a lot of stuff. That's, that's so, the only time you get house stuff done is when people are coming to the house. Let's be honest. I mean, you no, clean no, no, the Anna, house, no, no, but you we, don't you don't make it look like amazing no, unless there's other working, humans. I don't think you understand. The backyard had snakes and tortoises in it. Last oh, I know. We've been spring. talking about this for months. Yeah, you know, it, it, we've been doing that. Like, you know, we spent tens of thousands removing trees and do, but we've been doing a lot. I'm out there with chainsaws, you know, on, I, it doesn't seem like there's a day where I go without being with a two stroke motor rattling in my hand of some sort, whether it's a, an, uh, a weed eater with a big star blade on it or a chainsaw, I'm still out there clearing stuff, right? And that's what's going on here. Not to mention all the trouble we've been having. And I'm, I want to talk about that today with, you know, the vitamins and, and being behind on everything. And I want to I want to address that today also. So I didn't, I'm not fasting, because I don't believe in just fasting. But this is an, uh, you know, boy, what a great, what do you call it, to describe how good NSNG and low carb, you know, I'm so fat adapted. I've been working at a high rate, I'm at 25,000 some odd, almost 26,000 steps. The only calories I've put in my mouth today 
has been coffee and one of them the first one this morning had a little heavy whipping cream in it. So if you want to say that broke a fast knock yourself out but it didn't. Um, <laughs> so that proves that you can basically go a whole day. And by the way, when I'm done with this, my next phone call is from an old faithful Saro. Saro, you know, oh, he, Saro. Yeah, he's on Twitter all the time. He and his wife, Lolly gave generously to the movie when we did fat a documentary, the first movie, uh, so much so that we had dinner with him. And that's where I met him. And I feel like we're old friends now. So I'm going from phone, I'm going from this to that. And when I get off the phone with Saro, boom, right back out in the yard, it doesn't end. Right? I'm not sure I'm going to probably have at least a 24 hour fast with a lot of manual labor in there. That 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 shows you what can happen if you're fat adapted correctly. And then I'm sure tonight I'm gonna have another huge steak, maybe even two. Um, at some point, I'm gonna have to eat. Um, so that's what I'm doing over here. Um, two things. Can I ask you a coffee question then? No, not yet. Okay. I want to tell you something. Tell you know me how, something. You know how last week I came up with the best egg salad ever by putting your dill stuff in it? I don't. Did we talk about that on the air? I thought we did. Did we? we did. I don't remember. I think we talked about we it. We talked so about it off the air, but then you. Oh, wait, maybe you did. I think I talked about it on the air. Um, OK, cool. I, 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 took some <laughs> I can't remember. Anything. Just to let you guys know, I took some creme fraiche. I mixed in Anna's dill stuff. I added a little extra salt in it. And I had like, I, I can't remember, five, six, seven extra boiled eggs hanging around. I just chopped them up, mixed it all together. It was the best egg salad I'd ever had. Um, I, I'm now doing something else because those, those, those powders are sitting out. We use them. I, I used them on a steak. Uh, I ate last night, right? Uh, the barbecue rub. So, so here's the thing. They're always sitting out, right? All you gotta do is get your fingernails and just pop those things up. Yeah. Yesterday I was having an egg. You know, we had, we keep boiled eggs hanging around. So I'm there with the boiled egg and, and I got my, what do you call it? Malden salt. You know, I use a really good salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. My cooking. I use Redmond's, but I use Malden sometimes because I, I like use Malden. I like, I like Malden they on, on little boiled crunchy egg, flakes. Right? Yeah. So I got the little dish of Malden sitting there and I, I put some of that and I see the dill and I go, wait a minute. So I open the dill and I sprinkle a little bit with the Malden salt. You know what? Bonus to the hard boiled egg over the sink. Now, folks, the only way you should be enjoying a hard boiled egg is over the sink. That, that's what <laughs> it's designed for. Let's just be honest. It's a fast snack. But then I'm sitting there going, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. <laughs> and then I turned around and saw the barbecue stuff there. Oh, yeah, on the egg. And I went, wait a minute. Because sometimes I grab the paprika or the, or the cayenne. And you try to do your own egg. You do your yeah, own yeah. barbecue dust. But instead, yeah, yeah, now yeah. you got this one. Yeah. I, so now I, I, I get the fingernails in there. I lift that thing up. And I'm doing that. Right. Oh, hey, Serena. Bye, Serena. Uh, you are on video right now. That is going to go out to the world. If you think, you, you know what I was talking about? Anna, you know what I was just talking about? Anna, yeah. Serena, yeah, they can see. Come here. Right, look at what Serena looks like. Get, get, get in, my, in my camera down here, hon. Yeah. She, oh, hello. You think I'm kidding about, I was telling what we're doing. Yard work. Yard and, and the whole oh thing my God. and what have That's you. Filthy. Yeah. Covered in yeah. Um, what do you mean? gas the blower is that in the red can yeah do not put in no no the red can not not the plastic can okay there's a red plastic can do not put in it. do not put that in it this is real life happening right now it's it's on my workbench it's it's a can it's got a lot of writing on it it says for two stroke engines okay all right so um got she almost broke I've already that, broken. That them. sounded dangerous. Everything sounded dangerous. Yeah, that just I, happened. I just broke a, a shattered, a, a large plate glass today with, with, with the it, it just never ends, right? It never ends. No matter what you're trying to do, it just never ends. So yeah, so I took the uh, barbecue dust and put that. I, so I had to go back in the fridge to get a second egg because now I'm thinking, what else can I do? So I'm doing a barbecue dust. But you got to add a little extra salt in there, folks. You got to get that mold and salt or the, you know, the red. See, here's the thing. Somebody wrote me and they were like, I don't, I think the dill is salty enough. 
And I was like, I thought so too, but I think Vinny really likes the salt. So just be warned. Yeah, yeah, try it without. But I- try it without, see if you like. To me, it's supposed to have enough salt. That's how we did it. And in fact, it became a thing with the label compliance lady because she started going, and by the way, her job is just to make sure we're compliant with FDA regulations. Her job is not to tell me about nutrition, okay? Yeah. And and she and eventually like, we weren't really having each other and Matt had to kind of intervene. Right. But um which is honestly really rare for me. I get along with almost every human on the planet. And then this lady, I was like, uh-uh, no, not her. And then she ended the conversation with like, you know, you should really um reconfigure all of your spice mixes because there's too much salt in them. And I was like, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna murder you. Like you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. No, you're 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 you, you know. Everybody knows that with me, like every night when Serena serves my dinner, they, they put the little you know thing that you pinch salt out of because I like to. Right. You know, and yeah, I have I have Alden. I have one with uh, Redmond's mm-hmm. and I have uh, some kind of uh, a black Himalayan something. I, I love salt. And as a matter of fact, whenever um, Dr. Anthony J did my my special Westwood DNA up at um, at uh, uh, how you say Mayo Clinic. He he said, you know, he didn't know this about me. He goes, as part of your DNA, you need a lot of salt. Interesting. He, he you know, he was able to, to pull that out. So your dill stuff and your barbecue stuff goes well on hard boiled eggs. Only when you're eating them over the sink, folks. If you're not <laughs> them over the sink, this does not work. You could, you could pour some into a little like dish and you could just roll your hard boiled eggs in it and then eat it. Just saying. Um. I like to do that with the salt. I like to keep dipping it and I take a bite and then I dip it, roll it in the thing because I have a little special, I pour the little salt in the thing and then just roll it and take a bite and then roll it and take a bite. No, I like but to I like sprinkle. It. Everybody's got their sprinkle. move. I like, yeah, I like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that makes me happy. Thank you. All right, so um, uh, let, let me move on to something else. Let me just yep. get all of mine out of the way and then we'll get Okay, you. and then I'm going to, I have so many listener questions for you. Your mind's going to reel. It's going to distract okay. you from all the shit you have to do. Um, multicaps. They yes. uh, today, as I tell you this, uh, uh, folks, first off, I let me apologize. Uh, we are we we owe thousands and thousands of customers there. there and we we've lost customers. I'm going to be honest with you. We have lost customers at purevitaminclub.com. This is not our fault, but I'm apologizing because it's our company. Um, there are you know, when people say, hey, you can't get this and you can't get that. I think that's Anna might bring this up later in the show. People are starting to ask us, hey, what should we be keeping stocked up on in case there's a baby formula it? thing right now happening right. and cream cheese happened a few months ago. We've been I'm out of marinara. I don't know when I'm going to have marinara in. Yeah, th- there's a lot of supply chain stuff. And when you make a multivitamin, we, and by the way, we, we order this stuff. We and by the way, we don't, for anyone who doesn't know, none of our stuff is like white label crap. This is all bespoke vitamins that we make from scratch. It's a formula I came up with. It, you know, it's a beloved company. PureVitaminClub.com is beloved. Everyone, you know, but after seven years, because of whatever happened in the world and what's going on now, and, and now we're having trouble with other stuff with Ukraine, there are things that you, they're, they're minerals and vitamins that you cannot get. Right. And we, we just like a lot of companies are, we're on back order. And they, you know, we order this stuff three months in advance. So we're, mm-hmm. we, look, anyone who's been part of Pure Vitamin, we've never been out of anything. We've, we're just never out. No. And, you know, we, we quit shipping to Amazon only to get it to our customers that come to the website. We, we did everything we can. Europe, it, we've basically lost Europe. We're going to have to go reintroduce ourselves to Europe. Wow, we quit shipping work. outside. Uh, it, we, it's devastated my company. So anyone who's pissed off because, and I get it, I would be pissed off too, that your multivitamin wasn't showing up. And we look, we get all the hate mail and we get all the, hey, come on, bro. Come on, dude. What are you doing? We get it. We get it. We get it. We get it. <laughs> what I'm saying is, we're, I'm sorry. I, I'm apologizing. I'm hat, hat in hand here. I'm apologizing because it's not how we do business. There was nothing we can do about it. We have it in house now, shipping, shipping. Great. And here's what we did we, we actually have companies 
that, you know, uh, um, as you do, fulfillment companies that fulfill for us. We had the factory send us thousands, thousands of units. Yeah. We're shipping out from the office. Personally, we're trying to get them as fast. We said, you know, what? we don't even want that process to happen. We're trying to ship them out from the home office. We're doing everything we can. But, you know, uh, because of, you know, staff shortages and everything else, we're getting out several hundred a day. I think we can get out four or five hundred orders a day. So it's going to take us, a, you know, from when I'm saying this on a Thursday, it's going to take us a, a week, two weeks to catch up. It, it just will. If you just look at the numbers, it's going to take us a while to catch up. But I thank everyone who hung around. And uh, we hope we get everybody back. We, I'm sure we won't because when you piss people off, it, it is what it is. It upsets me as as much or more than it upsets you because it's my company it's my baby. It's my name on this company. Well, and number one rule of business is make it easy to sell things to people. And yeah. so when that happens, your business is not making any money and it really kind of chokes the whole process up, everything bottlenecks. So yeah. it's not like you want that to happen. Nobody wants that to happen. And so no. you're not being ignored, customers. Trust me. No, we love no you. you're not. We love you. And we're going to make everything right there. Um, we did catch up a couple of weeks ago on ultra fat. And um, we we're all we we're all caught up. And we had a lot of ultra fat. And then people went, oh, they're back in stock. And simultaneously, I said, hey, let's do kind of a you know, tip of the hat to the customers. Let's give 30% off on the next order. Well, between that and everybody going, oh, my God, they're back in stock. We started running behind again. Right. And we're now behind by a couple of weeks. We are still shipping, folks. I'm, again, I'm apologizing again for a different company that my name is on. That was right. I, I fucked up. I shouldn't have put a 30 percent discount to help people, you know, say, hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. Guys. Here, here's the third. Because, guys, at 30 percent, you're not making money. You're just breaking even. And that put us behind again, along with everyone else going, hey, supply chain stuff. Let's get ahead of the ball game. That became a problem. So we are catching up on that again. I'm apologizing. Um, and we're moving as fast as we can on that. Um, my understanding is that someone called the office. Andy was out of the office. And one of our employees said, the reason they're not shipping is because all of the machinery, all of the machinery is broken. Oh dear. We've reprimanded that employee because <laughs> number one, it's not true. I don't know if I don't know which one it was. I don't know if it's a he or she. That was not true. Um, we had one morning where a pump or something wasn't working about two weeks ago. And our, our last week, I don't know when it was. And Andy was actually bitching at me on the phone about it, going, can you believe one of the pumps went down and we're working on the pump and we have to go out there and we have to uh -huh. buy a new blah, 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 blah. The employee heard that. And mm -hmm. he picked up the phone. So uh, why, why is, where's my stuff? All the machinery is broken. Uh, that was not that person's place to say that. And I think Andy went on to the Facebook group and said, look, that's not true. You know, maybe I don't know what he said. I, don't, I didn't see it. I just heard about it. But we had something that was down one morning. And that's what happened. So, right. Um, folks, we're catching up on that, too. We have people working around the clock. Whenever anyone has as much as a common cold, we do not let them go into that facility. We are very careful. Um, so if someone goes, hey, I was sneezing last night, well, I don't care if it could right. be COVID or anything. else. We don't let them in a facility. So sometimes we're working at half staff or whatever. I'd rather err on that side than to, you know, th there, there's protocol when you're making food, right? Yeah. FDA stuff and all this stuff. We go beyond that. Because I am hell bent on putting out perfect products all the time. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Anna, what do you have? Uh, I'm going through the same thing with marinara. If you haven't already gotten an email from me, you will get an email from me. There's about, I think we're only behind about 14 orders, but it was going to start to really add up as these next couple of weeks go on until we can get our tomatoes from our guy and get the 
new round of marinara made. So I apologize to <laughs> yeah. stuff uh, sold extremely quickly, but you know what? We have the spicy arabiata, which will be on its I way to you wait. very soon. I can't wait to get that. We have the puttanesca and we have the pink crema and we have the spices. We have so many, so many wonderful things to order to stuff in your gob that you'll be very happy with. Um, so I can't Vinny, wait to make my protein crime with, oh, with the spicy. I used it on, on a chicken parm and I used it on a, pe- a low carb pizza crust. And it was like, uh, 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 Anna, Anna, I'm going to, I'm going to get two pounds, hungry of ground, right two pounds of ground beef. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to get the best Italian sausage. I know where I'm going for it. I know, I know which butcher I'm going to because okay, great. Italian sausage has to be right. And I'm going to get the mild. See, I'm not going to put spicy on spicy. That that's the wrong kind of crime. I'm gonna right. And, and uh, I'm going to put those eggs in there at the end. The boiled eggs. Oh, God damn. Oh, God damn. it's ready. We're time. It's time. We're ready. We're ready to eat the spicy. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't wait. wait. It's been shipping. So that's I'm available. That's salt shipping. To it. I'm full of salt. Yep. Yours is going to be coming to your house momentarily. Oh, you, just, you know what? Boy, if that shows up today, I'm not even working. It won't show up today because it just I'm, shipped yesterday. Oh, man. I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to be like everyone else. Come on, bro. Ski. It could show up in the middle of Tallulah's party, in which case you're welcome to open a jar and just drink it in front of everybody. You're going to hear, zip, you, you know, the DJ. Is, yeah. Record scratch. <laughs> and then I'm going to be there with my glug, 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 glug. Oh, my God. I can, yeah. If it's spicy, I'll drink it and I'll drink it. I might do a mukbang on the show. Muk, a mukbang? Yeah, I might a do spicy a spicy mukbang because I'm going to hear you go. <sighs> yeah, but if I slurp that and it gets a little too deep on my throat, yeah, it could be that a could disaster. That would be an interesting mukbang. Okay. Joking. All right, go on. What you got? Let's see. I just want to ask this first, and congrats, congrats to um, Bernard for catching me at just the right time. Hi, Anna. Love the Monday podcast. This is a coffee question. Love the Monday podcasts with you and Vinny. I found you guys via Mike Rose podcast. I've sent Vinny a similar message, but him being the hot shot he is. I'm guessing he's super busy. Anyway, I'm also busy. <laughs> I just check message. Vinny doesn't check messages. You guys, I actually check uh, messages and that's why you guys all email me to get to Vinny. It works. It works. They also way. email, totally um, they email Debbie and Debbie will get it to me sometimes. Um, I had a, a, an ultra fat customer, uh, email me, uh, about, <laughs> about the status of her order. She was sweet. She was really sweet about it, but I was like, Oh, perfect. I really can't. They, they don't give me those passwords. I apologize. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I, I'm here hat in hand today. I'm just. It, it's, yeah. to, it's totally fine. It, it's not we're, fine. We're, we're all a team. We have each other's backs. We're asleep at night. All right, but go on. It is, it is like, I guess it takes a certain, because some, some people don't care if they're behind on stuff. And I notice that a lot in the grocery industry. Like if we're out of stock or behind on something, they're like, oh, well. And I'm like, I'm freaking out because how do you make money unless you're selling it to people? How does the company stay sustainable unless we're able to turn around sales? Well, because anyway. we have people. And, and by the way, and, the, and you, if you still have to pay all your bills and pay the people and the overhead and the things and the website. And the, let me just add this. You, you know, we, we went to that food expo. Yeah. I'm going to fancy food show in three weeks, by the way, we need to bank some shows. Well, here's some, here's the thing. Anna. Yeah. There's some big companies, big food stores. I, I know, you, you know, the, they and, want you. And yeah. we're telling them, look, sorry, we're, we're our customers first. We, we can't, we can't. Oh, you we're, have to. And so we're to losing, the, the, the amount of business I'm losing. They'll make you want, they'll, they'll want you even more. It's okay. Crazy. All right. So go on. Okay. He says, I'm coming from keto light, which I've never heard that phrase before, but I like it. Keto light, no sugar, no caffeine, which I've never heard. No caffeine, but okay. And I'm moving into the NSNG lifestyle, which by the way, whenever it, I know we say it's a lifestyle, it's not a diet, but also the word lifestyle is used to talk about the sw- the swingers movement, the open yeah. relation. It's called the lifestyle. So I always crack up when we have the NSNG lifestyle. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's sex. It's low carb. Hey, I'm, not, you know what? I, I'm not square, man. <laughs> I'm not, I, okay. Swing. I've been, I, I, would, I would swing so hard. All right. I know you would. I know. We know that for men. We know all men would. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even a hall pass. That's just swinging. Yeah. All right. Go on. He says, I've been off caffeine now for a while for various reasons. The problem is I find myself nodding off later in the mornings 
if I'm bored and I'm thinking I need caffeine to boost to get me through the mornings? Where do you and Vinny stand on caffeine? How does it play into NSNG? Does it affect blood sugar levels and how? I'd appreciate you and the big guys input on these questions. Have a great day. That's a good question because um, let, let's take caffeine out of the equation first. Okay. If you are getting a lull late in the morning, that means when I, I do this on the phone calls to people all the time, they'll go, they'll go, yeah, you know, and I'll say, do, do, do you get a little lull late in the morning? Once they tell me what they're doing for breakfast, or I'll say, do you get hungry at around 11? Because I ask them exactly what time they eat what and the whole thing in a consult. And they'll say, yeah, how did you know that? And it's like, because you're taking in too many sugars. And you're now getting that sugar, that sugar high is going away, you're getting the lull, or you'll start feeling hungry because ghrelin and leptin are, you know, settling in and there you have it. So if you're doing NSNG correctly, this is aside from caffeine, you do not need caffeine, right? Coffee, coffee is good for your health. Coffee with caffeine. There's nothing about caffeine that's bad for your health. It doesn't cause heart disease. It doesn't cause hypertension, high blood pressure. All the things you've heard over the years doesn't cause any of that. Coffee is a great antioxidant. As a matter of fact, it's one of the best antioxidants. And as a matter of fact, the AHA, the American Heart Association, has done studies to show that for every cup of coffee you have per day, you lessen your chance of any sort of heart disease by 10%. So if you have two cups a day, that's 20%, three cups, 30%. So yeah, 10 cups a day, you're at 100%. Um, no, they didn't say that. But the more coffee you drink, the better. And it's a great antioxidant. The caffeine is just an added benefit, right? So but even absent of coffee, what's the guy's name, Anna? Bernard, 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 even absence of coffee, you don't you shouldn't need coffee as a as a stimulant. If you feel like you do, there's something else going on. Right. And, and that should be addressed first. Um, coffee is just something uh, I use coffee to calm me down. According to Dr. Howie Mandel, oh my God, he often said he goes, you know, you have ADHD. And I said, Well, how do you know? He goes, Oh, you mean you use it to focus? Yeah, he goes, Right. You drink coffee all the time. I, I would walk into his house with a full mug of coffee. And whenever and then we were somewhere together, we were flying around. He, he flies private. So he was taking me along. And when you get on the plane that you know, you're in a private jet, they'll give you, you know, sir, would you like a foot massage? Would you, no, I'm kidding. But would you like something to eat, drink? And most people grabbing booze, how right. would you really drink booze that night or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I said, yeah, yeah, just a cup of coffee. I'm having a cup of coffee. They come around later, sir, can we get you anything? Yeah, another cup of coffee, if you don't mind. And we're playing cards or whatever on the plane. And and then we're at the show and um, we're at some, I was at one of Howie's shows somewhere, somewhere and another cup of coffee. And he goes, you know what? It was the first time we traveled together. He goes, you use coffee to to get yourself, you know, because it's a stimulant that helps you focus, right? Some people take Adderall and all these other kinds of things. Apparently, I use coffee and never knew it, according to Dr. Howard Mandel. Um, so that's an un un I think that I probably use it for the same thing. Although I, I have to admit that I still have a thing where I go, I stop myself from having all the coffee that I really want. Do you really? I, I have about a cup and a half to two cups in the morning. And I put in my vital proteins and I whip in coconut oil and I'll put the Redmond salt on it. And yeah. then I'll do a Nespresso and I always do your double French in the morning. And then I always do a Nespresso long pull in right. the afternoon about three o'clock. And there's like right now between right now and three, I'll be honest with you. I want another cup of coffee because it does help me focus and I get more work done, but I don't feel jittery. I don't feel bad. I don't feel nauseous. I don't feel any of those things. And uh, so I always wonder, like, should I have it? Or am I getting too addicted to it? It's all that no. thing in my head that makes me, you know what I mean? Look, it, it's almost four o'clock. I'm having, a, you know, my um, honey process right now. And I, after dinner tonight, I'll probably have a double espresso around nine o'clock. 
No but that's because you metabolize it quickly and it doesn't right. keep so Some people, you know. If I'm, I do that, I will stay awake. I could literally or drink I'll fall coffee. asleep, but I'll wake up at midnight going, I'm awake. No, I, I could drink coffee at, at midnight, <clears throat> brush my teeth, go to bed. Triple espresso, midnight, brush my teeth, go to bed, and sleep soundly. Now, to be fair, the blood that runs through your body is 85% coffee. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And the other 15% is pure Italian. <laughs> um, and, but here's the other side of it. And I had a sleep expert on if I drink an alcoholic beverage within an hour of going to bed, I will wake up within three hours wide awake, like someone you know, like, the, you know, like buzzing zzz, wide awake. Right. And I had a sleep expert come on and explain, you know, he's like, yeah, once the booze metabolizes and blah, 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 blah. And I, I didn't really understand what he was talking about you know, it wakes me up. I started learning that if I want to have my drink on a Friday night or Saturday night, um, I try to finish it by seven, eight o'clock at the latest, because I go to bed around midnight, right? So that gives me a good four hours for it to metabolize out, and move on. I'm going to one up you with that and say, I try to finish having any alcohol before dinner. Because uh, you know what, Anna, I try to you know stop having it by breakfast time. I just stop. <laughs> you try breakfast. to stop. Who can stop at breakfast? <laughs> no, but I'm just, I'm just saying because for me, I I learned that from having the aura ring, the overpriced ripoff of a ring, aura ring. Not yeah. a fan, but I am a fan. But I'm not. I have a very love hate relationship with this thing, and also their company. I'm mad at them. Really? Why Why are you mad at them? Because I remember you wore the that. Tech, like the tech is really great for what it does. Then, so I bought the Gen 2. Then they were like, we're, we're rolling out all these features, but it can only be in the Gen 3. And if you want to get it, you know, you get your discount. Into it. But still, here's another 225 250 to, And oh, I bought the immediately. Like no, I immediately bought it. And then now none of those features work. And a year later, they're like, you're coming up on your one year anniversary of having it. We're going to start to charge you a monthly fee. And I said, no, you're not cancel everything. And then they wrote magically, they wrote to all of their people with rings who have the gen three rings. We're going to expand, expend your, extend your membership three months so that you can enjoy the features that are rolling out. And by the way, like they had a period tracker that's never worked. It's terrible. Right. And, um, and, but I, what I was really excited about is I do love what it tells you about your sleep. That's the best thing about it. You know, the, the best it doesn't do any of the, it says they were incorporating workout heart rate. They were incorporating blood oxygen levels, all, all these features that they never did. But I don't want to wear a watch. I think the Apple Watch is bulky. I don't like it. So that's why I've worn the ring. And so that's why I have a love-hate relationship with it. But what I learned from it that was love was the sleep stuff. And if I have alcohol past a certain hour, and it, so I've noticed like if I'll have a cocktail before dinner, I'm okay. Or like a little tiny like thimble of white wine, I'm okay. If I have anything <laughs> past a certain hour, it's almost like a two day cycle. It takes for me to regain my sleep Yeah, and it's not worth it. So I don't do it. Yeah. And by the way, why do you need a period tracker? You know, what tracks your period really well, your underwear, they start getting bloody, <laughs> you know, no, fake, look at that. here's what's Vinny. Here's what's happened since going NSNG. I will, let me say this before NSNG and the women will relate to this. And I know men, you think you can tune out, but your hormones change too. When you go NSNG, sure. it's just, it's just simpler. So, so before NSNG, I'm talking 15 to 21 day periods. I'm talking boobs that whoa, 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 hurt whoa, whoa, after whoa, day what, five. What? Yes. You I'm talking, for, you, are, you would go for 15 days, 15 to 21 days. Sometimes, sometimes you 23 were a bitch for mostly 21 days. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't bleeding. I'm saying the cycle. So from the, oh, the day cycle. one, the cycle day one is the first day of your period. And you're supposed to have another period on day 28. Day one starts over again. Right, my right. cycles were 15 to 21 days long. Wow. I know. And so I would have my hormones tested and they were like, you're, I don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows anything. And so I would have the boob pain that was so bad right after I ovulated until like for two weeks or however long till I got, it was awful. And I would spot uh, all these things would happen. So I go NSNG. I have zero PMS. I don't have any moodiness. I don't have any boob pain. I don't have any spotting. I don't have any indication. Then all of a sudden, boom, I'll get now. Here's the thing. It's still all over the place. And I think that's because of my age, the frequency. But do you know what a gift it is to not have those symptoms anymore when those things kind of rule your life and you have to 
move forward with your life anyway, right, feeling like right, you did right. all the time. Yeah, look, I hear this from guys. One of the things I hear from guys and women tell me a lot about what's going on in their pants too, but guys are, you know, I can't tell you the number of guys in their forties and their thirties and they'll go, Hey man, you know, yeah, I, I had two victory lap phone calls this week. I love when people do the victory lap phone calls. Yeah, that's go, hey, man, I just want, you know, half an hour phone call just to thank you for everything. And, you know, this kind of thing. And, um, you know, the, one of the things that they'll get into, you know, I've lost 150 pounds, my A1C, blah, 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 blah. And my, you know, my fatty liver and, you know, my my sleep apnea. And I, you know, I never thought I'd be off of the, you know, all, all the stuff you hear, all the, you know, both of them this week, same thing, man, I just thought sex for me was over with. Can you imagine? That, and that's no, I can't two year old guy sex should never be over sex with was over with sex. I mean, I'm 60. I'm still banging. I'm going to be one of those weird 80 year old women who still likes to bang. I'm determined. Let's see. Let's see. I know you're like, you're like, I'm trying to get turned on. But then you said 80 years I'm, old. I'm, 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 I'm trying to think <laughs> how old will I be at that time? Maybe You'll be 90. Reason. Maybe Serena has some horrid disease, you never know. And yeah. And you just happen to be in the path of this horny 80 year old. By the way, Serena was watching. Uh, and then I just, ah, I can't resist. Wait, Because I did NSNG for 50 years. Exactly. Now, now I got to bang Anna. Ugh, look at me. Ugh. Look at me hitting that young 80 year old. Listen, I, I will tell you this. Here's the pact. Because you know, people make the pact. Yeah, We're going to make the pact. pact. Right, if right. I'm 80 and you're 90. Yeah. And we're both single. I get a hall pass. Oh, I yeah. don't need a hall pass for single. Yeah, you don't need a hall. I, 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 we have to both right. be single. Oh, wait, hang on. If you're 80. Uh-huh. And let's say Lauren's still alive. No. I'm I'm 90 and Serena. I'm an Italian woman. I can't do that. Yeah. You know what happens when Lauren dies, right? I become like that Italian widower, widow, who's like. Yeah. He was the only was, one. He was the only one, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah, or at least that's what they say to the, the public. By the way, Serena was watching my favorite show with me, uh, the, my new favorite show, The Ranch. And she saw mm -hmm. uh, Alicia yeah. Cuthbert and she goes, why does that woman look familiar? And I went, she looks very familiar, doesn't she? And she goes, yeah. And I said, just keep keep looking at her, keep looking at her. And then finally she goes, Did she say the same thing. Oh, my God, she looks like Anna. And you see the thing that throws you. It, I don't look any. She's so beautiful. I don't look anything that like her. Throws you is you're a brunette and she's a blonde, but it, it's the expression. You guys do the same expressions and, and the whole thing. There's something about but you, know, you guys look a lot alike. I'm telling you. I'll take it. That's a huge compliment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to do a follow up. So uh, that's coffee question, Bernard. Thank you. Um, somebody wrote me at my website, Karen. 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 Me. Okay. A oh, but, to... There's a Karen. Okay, go on. This can't be good. No, no. She's she wrote it. I feel like all Karens now they have to be extra nice. They're like, oh, I had a Karen oh. Karen me the other day on and I saw her name was Karen. I went, Oh, I just got Karen by a Karen. Yeah, it's it's, it's an like extra level else, of satisfaction. Someone, yeah, someone else brought it up. Someone else goes, goes to figure her name is Karen. <laughs> so I've been saying this since Karen became a thing. Why do we not have a TV show that's like TMZ, but it's Karen's? Because I know we have internet, but it should be. Right. I would watch Karen's freaking out in public for hours. I find it just fascinating. It's delicious. I love that because, we, you know, we, I have a good friend. Uh, my, my buddy Doug's wife's name is Karen. She was the first one that told me about Karen's. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, yeah. there's a lot of really nice Karen's who get stigmatized by the Karen's. Well, or the bad Karens. Karen Richardson is um um is really nice. So she, well, it, Karen Brown is probably really nice too. She okay, wrote me at my yeah. site, and this is a follow up to last week. And and we should do we should think of more one hundred ones to do because the fruit, like the comprehensive fruit episode, was very uh, it was yeah. well received. Yeah, Anna. Until hearing Vinny on Mike Rowe, I would eat it. Oh wait, let me stop. We also have to talk to this guy named Matt who's on the clubhouses. Matt, if you're listening reach out to me because we need to get you on a Saturday show with Vinny. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to love this guy. Anyway, okay, Karen. Karen says, Anna, until hearing Vinny on Mike Rowe, I would eat a yummy honey crisp or cosmic crisp. I haven't even heard of that variety of apple. At 2 p.m. every single day. I had been told to try a low-carb lifestyle by my doctor a few years ago, and his statement about low-carb was, do not eat fruit for 30 days. 
yeah, I couldn't do that. But after listening to you and Vinny, I was ready to try it. And I have not had an apple in four weeks. It is possible. And I will choose to have apples later and really enjoy them, but not right now. So let Tim know it is possible. He's the one who asked the fruit question last week. I have both of your books and I'm learning to cook all over again. Thank you for everything. So that was a very nice Karen message to receive. Yeah, she's not Karen like it. She must be a younger Karen. You know, someone accidentally named her. Exactly. Yeah. It, it wasn't intentional. Because Thank you, Karen. You can't, find, you can't find a Karen or a Michelle that's younger than, and now someone's going to write to me and go, I'm, my name is Michelle. I'm 34. Yeah. Okay. So your parents screwed up. You should have, yeah. but most Sharon's, most Sharon's another one. You never hear of Sharon, Sharon, Michelle, no. Sharon. You, you got to be 60 to have those names. Lisa. Nope. No Lisa's. Um, Just yeah, you know, you know, look, uh, Dr. Eric Westman, who's been on the show several times, he was in both of my, my first two movies, Fat a Documentary and Fat Two. Um, he, he has an obesity clinic up at Duke University where he works with morbidly obese people. And he has a sign on the wall that says fruit is candy or something to that, you know, fruit is nature's candy. Right. Yeah, there's just no question about it. You know, I, I started yelling about this last week when I was saying, like, now people are going, well, honey was around, you know, we heard this back when everyone at the beginning of NSNG, we weren't dealing with keto, there was something else called paleo that was around. Right. And people go, well, during the paleolithic era, you know, honey was around, Get, you know what, uh, so was, uh, um, you know, I don't know, um, spent uranium, but you're not supposed to eat that. Right? My yeah. ancestors ate uranium, and that's why I'm a superhero. So yeah, so just you know, just know that. Um, so I wasn't going to bring this up because I feel like we bring this up all the time, but I still get these kind of requests. And my web guy wrote me; he's now ready to go back to doing his NSNG and get serious about it. But of course, the first thing he texted me was a link to a quote unquote keto flower. Oh boy. Am I going to lose it here, Ann? <laughs> Am I? I need to know. And it's funny because I feel like we're beating a dead horse, but you guys, people are still really confused about this. And it doesn't surprise me because in my Instagram feed, something called Top Keto Meals came up because I follow the hashtag Keto Diet. Right. And Top Keto Meals has thousands and hundreds of thousands of followers. And the picture was of a de very delicious looking stir fry. And it listed the recipe and the recipe had flour, sugar, soy sauce, like all the things. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Am I missing something? And then all the comments were like, that looks amazing. That looks great. And I was like, is nobody saying like, hey, this has sugar in it. Is it keto? Like nobody questions anything. And then I realized why it's because when you're starting NSNG, you want the substitutes because he said, I need something for the buns and the Sammies. And I said, no, you don't. But so, I have recipe for a chaffle. You can make a chaffle. Hang, hang on, Anna. What's it called? Those new keto. Let me find it. Let me find his text. Yeah, because I want to know what it is. And by the way, there's a million of these products. There, and there's also crackers, cookies, cakes, etc. Well, hey, well, well, all well, Andy, and say they're keto. When Andy and I were at the uh, the, at the expo, S Expo West, nothing but new stuff coming around to fool people. The two biggest problems at Expo West was keto. And um, number one, keto. And number two, I can't read. With, I, all I can read is keto. Anna. It just says mouthwatering motivation is the company keto bread and pastry flour. It's actually kind of cool packaging. It's all white. Right, find out what's in it. I, I don't give a carbs. Don't, don't give this them. This is what's on the front. This is what's on the front. All right, so read what's on the front. Three net carbs, 11 grams of protein. And it's a very simple. And I wrote him back saying the only thing healthy about this is the packaging. You should just eat the packaging. But what's the ingredient? I'll tell you what the ingredient is. I want the ingredient. One and a half pound bag is twenty nine ninety seven. Jesus Christ. Which people will pay because they really want to make their substitutes. Hello, I, ha I have recipes in my books that uses real food to make the substitutes. It doesn't have this in it. Ready? Go figure. Ready? I'm, I can't wait. First ingredient, vital wheat gluten. Okay, so the first ingredient in a- Is a grain. Is a grain, it's wheat. And, an, and a very, very inflammatory one at that. 
Yeah, the most. Not even the first one is rice flour, which would be less inflammatory. You know what? The only thing that's more inflammatory would be soy or perhaps corn, but it's it's a toss up. You know, second ingredient, Mm -hmm. oat fiber. Okay, we're up to two grains. Yeah, two grains, and they're putting that in there so they can start their negative thing of oh, we you know it's got fiber. Exactly. So I go on, Anna. Number three, lupin flour, which is a legume. Lupini beans. Again, so that's inflammatory. Starchy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Monk fruit sweetener. Okay, sugar. That's four. Organic, unbleached wheat flour. Flour so they, again. They outright that's just good. put regular, they put vital wheat gluten and flour in it. So yeah. two kinds of gluten. So we're up to five. And then the last one is the least offensive, xanthan gum, which is what they need to kind of hold it all together, right? right? Okay, Anna. The, you would be better off just eating plain old fashioned flour. By the way, folks, don't do that. I, I'm, I, you know, this is how they're lying to people. Look, when I tell people you can stamp keto on a bag of sugar and call it keto sugar, there is no group or organization out there that is monitoring this stuff. Zero, none, nada, ain't happening. Okay. That's the fact of the matter. I would I would rather see somebody make something nice out of a homemade thing than use some bastardized product anyway. That's probably not going to taste as good. Yeah, I'm sorry. But when people are still texting me, it's not like they're posting it in the group. They're texting me directly. These are friends of mine who don't you know what I mean? They, they get conflicting messages and they feel like they're going to miss the sandwich bread. And, and again, my site has a chaffle recipe that's super simple. It's just eggs, cheese, and pork rinds. And you can right. make that until you get over it. And in fact, today I posted a video of a deconstructed filet of fish that uses a cheese chaffle. And then you fry the cod and the almond flour, and then you make tartar sauce and use the dill and the tartar sauce. And you get that feeling of having that fish fry comfort food. Right. And it's great. And will you make that all the time? Maybe at first, and then you'll get over it. Yeah. People make the pizzas a lot at first and then they kind of get over it. And right. then they start to make just like what you do, the ground beef with the thing or just make the zucchini noodles with some nice ground beef and some sauce. And- well, look, even Maria is making uh, pizzas now with uh, sausage. Sausage. That's great. Crust you can pizza. make the sausage crust pizza. Oh, she, she's all into it. But I think that people, they want to believe that this thing will work if they can have all these fake foods and it doesn't work. And that's what, and that's when I sit in the clubhouses with people who are majorly plateauing and then you find out they're having four Lily's chocolate bars a day yeah. that have so much erythritol and all the stuff. Oh, now, look, I mean, every day I do the consults every day consults and people go, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm on a plateau. can't figure it out. And it, it's always, I, I find five or six things. There was a woman yesterday. She goes, uh, I started doing this. My boyfriend listens to you on Corolla, blah, blah, blah. I started doing it three weeks ago. And I haven't lost a pound. And she was five, three, 250 pounds. I'm like, geez, even if you're doing it kind of halfway, right? You know, you got, you know, right, when you should you, drop a few, right? When, yeah, she was like 35 or 40. She wasn't that old. I'm like, you should have at least lost water weight. I'm, I'm thinking this to myself. And then she started listing off what she was eating, I thought it was being punk. I didn't tell her that. But you, you know, and I said to it, did have you downloaded the PDF? Yes, I have downloaded the PDF. And when she says yes, I've downloaded the PDF. The way she said it made me ask a second question. She didn't read it. <laughs> have you read it yet? No, it's been sitting here for two weeks. Okay. Okay. Read that. And, uh, you know, I gave her 20 or 30 different hints of what she was doing wrong, right? Because even if you're doing 50 or 60% of it correct, or correctly, I should say, you should at least start losing inflammation. But when she told me she hasn't lost a pound yet, I knew right then and there, wait, that, you know, I, what she's going to tell me is going to be and she goes, we buy all the keto products from the store. Mm-hmm. All the, and I said, well, does your husband have to lose weight? And she was like, no. Say, oh, now, now I get it. You see, he, the, 
they're trying to do the right thing. They just went to the store and started buying anything with keto written on it. Right? That's where yeah. we are. You well, know. it's a case of your good intentions have been stolen because you hear keto. And by the way, I have celiac, so I'm not supposed to have gluten or wheat flour anyway. And so it used to be when I would hear the word keto, inherently it meant to me that it's grain free, which means I can eat it. Right. Not anymore. Not anymore. It basically just means how can we weasel all of our macros into one thing so that I can get away with having the thing. And let me add to that. Just trying to game the system. You remember early on in the gluten days when, you know, it's like, well, it's gluten free. People thought gluten free meant it was also NSNG. There's no right. gluten in corn, right? right. So, or rice. And they would yeah. and they, and they put gluten free on the front. They would put gluten free and people go, look, I can have this. It's NSNG. And I'll go, well, how do you figure that? It's like it's gluten free. Gluten is a protein that is in wheat flour. Wheat, wheat. barley, rye, and spelt. Yeah. So if it's not that, then you can put gluten free on it doesn't mean it's healthy. Again, spent uranium is gluten free. <laughs> Again, I can eat that. That's why I'm a superhero. You can. Yeah. No one else. I'm a celiac. I'm a celiac. So I'm allowed to have uranium. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the so, doctor said, right? And you know, I misunderstand gonna, that someone's going to hear this folks. And is someone's going to hear this and go oh. eat uranium. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they're going to get a hold of I uranium. Eat uranium. <laughs> I don't know. Anna said, eat it. Yeah. Um, Can you see him at the drugstore going, do you have uranium? Um, I heard uranium. It, do you, does it make you poop? Like, how's it work? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we sort of stuff. <laughs> I would love to lose weight. Okay, I want to ask, where, well, where are we with time? I'm almost done uh, because I, I got Sarah coming up. and. Okay, let's just be well, done because yeah. here, here's the thing. And I love this question and I promise to save it. Um, Ted Dory is talking about uh, on Twitter and we said we would get to it, but let's do it next week about how many carbs and is it offset by exercise? It's, it's the bank calories in calories out, but it said now it's carbs in carbs out. Yeah. I, do, I, like I, I don't want to, I don't want to want to rice that. Anna, that is going to be write it down. I want that to be okay. a little, I, I have a little one-on-one, um, a yeah. one-on-one, a 101 uh, so for we next could do Monday. A, a Kiko Seco Calories in, calories I, 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 out. Hang on, primer. Anna, Anna. I have an idea. Okay. Let's not make him wait until next Monday. Let's do it this coming Friday. Okay. So let's do a special Anna on Friday show, where okay. we, you know, because I don't want to make this guy wait another whole week. Can you can you push in a Friday show between now yeah. and next Monday? Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, it, it will find time, and we'll do a special. Uh, 101 on Friday, Anna Vocino coming in, coming in hot, hot, folks. The other thing that's hot is her sauce. Go to Eat Happy Kitchen and get that sauce. And arabiata. Uh, arabiata. get the arabiata, and you'll get that, and you'll get a nice spicy flavor, just like Miss Anna Vocino, whose boobs are now bigger than uh, Gina Grads. So there. So there. She's not going to say anything. She's giving me the blank stare. Oh, I'm getting the blank stare. No uh, comment. I, I, I have nothing to compare it to. I can't oh, I can I, either confirm or, nor deny. I can, com I can confirm it. Um, so, folks, uh, Anna Vocino also has what I'm finding you could put this dust on everything. Uh, I've only been impressive. experimenting with the, we have all three of the dust. Um, but I've been experimenting with the barbecue with eggs and also the dill with eggs in different ways. I wonder if, you know what, Anna? I may try to do an egg salad with the barbecue. I wonder how I would do that. Stay tuned, folks. I'm going to try to add barbecue to my egg salad and see if I can figure that out. Stay tuned. We're on the edge of our seats. Because when Vinny goes to cooking, it, it turns out well sometimes. That's true. Sometimes it turns out to be a disaster. I tried to make Anna's um, eggnog and I ended up making custard. It was well, a damn see, good custard, by the way. And, and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put your coffee in and make a coffee custard. I just haven't got, I got to do that and film it. Yeah. Do do a it let's have tip. it for next Tuesday, a little Tuesday tip. Okay, great. Um, yeah, uh, Anna, I, you can actually, if you overcook her recipe, you can make yourself some custard. 
damn good. Well, that's and because you also went rogue and you're like, I'm going to put in 12 egg yolks instead of the six or whatever it calls or the eight, whatever it calls. Yeah, I, I put in four or five <laughs> extra because it didn't look like enough. Yeah. So, um, boy, it was good. It really yeah. was good. I love an egg custard. Yeah. So oh good. My God. Yeah. I'm hungry so, now, too. Yeah, now I want to go eat. So okay. Got, and by the way, Anna vicino has got books. Yeah. I'm happy and eat happy too. By the way, people tell me every time they do the phone call, I have Anna's books. Tell her I love Anna's books. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I hear that well, all the time. You, too. you know what's the best thing to cook with if you're cooking in my books? A spoon. Villa Capelli olive oil. In a pot. And Villa Capelli <laughs> olive oil. That's right. That's right. I used it yesterday. I, I invented Say something. So. I'm going to tell you what I invented because we were watching the history of the Food Network. It's called The Food That Made America. Right. And it's this, oh, no, it's on History Channel. And, you know, you love the History Channel because they do these dramatic shows, but really all they're doing is telling you the history of something. Yeah. And it was the history of Chef Boyardee and Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. And they have the, they hire these reenactors to play, and they're all like 22-year-olds playing like all the parts because that's all they can get for, for people to play these roles. And they play dramatic music, and then they just stare. So the guy who like, formed Kraft Mac and Cheese. They just show him, like, while they talk about the history, he just stares and he, like, rubs his chin. It's so dramatic and insane. But what they did with Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, did you, do you know the story, how revolting it is? No. They had, they had cheese left over from basically World War I, and they dehydrated it, and they put it in storage. Really? For years. And then they saw this guy, this Italian in Pennsylvania was making these spaghetti boxes of prepackaged spaghetti dinners, which right. by the way, back then Italian food was like so exotic. Yeah. Like Americans had never tasted those flavor combinations, right? Yeah. And they stored this cheese, this <laughs> whatever, dehydrated yellow cheese and they invented that. They basically said, let's send the packets of cheese out because it was like during the depression and nobody had any money. So they're like, let's send the macaroni and the packets of cheese and then tell the people they have to buy the butter and the milk and they can make their own dinner with it. And it's delicious and nutritious. And so they basically sent like years and years old cheese. And America's like, I love it. It's great. I love it. And it was obviously people still love it. And I thought to myself, I've always hated Kraft macaroni and cheese. Now, Vinny, I, you have a look on your face. It makes me think you've probably never had Kraft macaroni and cheese. I feel like you haven't. I haven't. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I, I'm not going to eat from a po pasta in a box. I know. It's absolutely revolting. I think I've had it maybe two to three times in my entire life. And it was definitely 30 years ago. Like in boarding I, school, I, I, college, I do you know? know this. Um, did, did you know that you know, you know, I think they spell Chef Boyardee B O Y Boyardee Boyardee, Boyardee. Boyardee. yeah, yeah, his yeah. name was like Henry or Hector or something. Boyardee, Hector Boyardee. Mm -hmm. was it Hector Boyardee? It was Hector, yeah. right? Hector Boyardee. He was, yeah, he was he, an interesting guy. I like, wait, stop. Why did my FaceTime open? No, don't know. Um, but, um, it, but so anyway, so I said to myself. But th that's so gross and revolting and I hate it, but I do love a fresh mac and cheese and I have an amazing mac and cheese, zucchini mac and cheese recipe in my first book. And then last night I said, what happens? What happens if I slice some onions and I take the Brussels sprouts, right? And you know how you hold a Brussels sprout with a little, by the little butt end? Yeah. And if you turn it flat and then you chop it into discs, right? So I All took right. a pound and just chopped it into discs and then gave that some chops because it kind of just breaks apart into like slivers, you know? Sure, yeah. So I did the onion thing and I put a ton of Villa Capelli in the pan, mm. put the onion in the Brussels sprouts and I put um, a quarter of a cup of water in there and I covered it and just let that cook. Okay. And then I open it, I put the salt, the pepper, the onion powder, the garlic powder. I poured about a quarter of a cup of uh, heavy cream added two tablespoons of butter and a cup and a half of grated cheddar oh. and, melt, and melted it in there and covered it. And it was almost exactly like a Mac and cheese. It was cheesy sprouts. And I will type up the recipe and take a proper picture. I, I got, I got but it started with Villa Capel. It was, I got so it. I got it. It was inspired by the nasty craft Mac and cheese documentary that I saw. Tell people where they can find Villa Capelli. You guys got to get Villa Capelli. It's so good. The best olive oil on the planet. So flavorful, so amazing. And so underpriced.
in my opinion, especially where supply chain shit is going. I hope they don't run out. I hope they can still harvest this year and get it over the over the Atlantic to us. It's grown in Puglia, Italy, which is where the best olive oil is from. If you want some, go to villacapelli.com. Use the discount code VINI, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off your order. They do free shipping on orders over hundred bucks. So make sure you get the three liter tin, some other salts, some spices, whatever, maybe the, the little lemon oil or the, the rosemary or whatever. Get the stuff. It's all good. It's all wonderful. And uh, use Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E as the discount code. You get 10% off your order each and every time. Support them. They are longtime uh, supporters of this podcast. And we just love Steven and his new hot boyfriend, Vito. Really? Yes. Oh, well, you know, good for him. Vito is yeah. cute. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'll give him a look. I'll, t- I'll talk to Steven. Folks, uh, you know what to do with me. We all go shopping on Amazon. Uh, but before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTartars.com, click through the banner. It puts a little coal on the fire and it gets my train down the track and we're able to keep this show free for a lot of years running. Uh, we've uncovered the first episode of this show and I think it's being put up if it hasn't been put up already um, because we lost that episode for a long time and, and Debbie found it. So um, folks, if, if you want to go back over 2100 episodes, you can do that. But you know, we keep putting it out for free. So please support us by doing that. Also, we have a super fan page at vinnytorteris.com. You can go there. It's kind of like PBS, you give us a couple of bucks and we keep the show running and um, go on, Anna. Can I give a challenge to the micro people? Because people have done this in the past and I really love it because now we're coming up on four to six weeks, maybe six to seven weeks since you've been on the show and people have started an SNG. What I really like is when people go to the super fan and they're like, you see some random amount, like 17 bucks or 22 bucks. And then they say it's because that's that's how much weight they're how much weight they've lost 17 pounds. Um, Yeah. Some people do a little thing where they, you know, they'll give us five, 10, 15, $20 a month, you know, just recurring because you could do that or you could do a one time thing. And I'll see like crazy numbers, you know, like, um, you know, some I I love when people lose, they get right to 100 pounds, and they'll send $100, right? That that's always been kind of a thing. Um, I like that. And you know, the Scott Kings of the world, when they lose two and 300 pounds, boy, that's, that's a big number. Although I don't think Scott's ever given us money. That's why I moved on to my new favorite person being. (laughs) That's why. Yeah. Um, So, Tim, you know, he's joking, Scott, if you want to stay my favorite, Tim, when you lose two, 300 pounds, <laughs> you may want to toss me a couple. I guess of you can buy your way to the top is with what the message teacher, is with that teacher's salary of yours. No, Tim, whatever you do, don't send me money. Not not that much, as a matter of fact. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I love when people do that kind of thing, because it's kind of fun, right? It is when, fun. You know, and people have lost 20 pounds. And that was the one lady who um, she sent me like a wacky amount. And it's because she won King of the Hill, King of the Mountain of the King, you know, it's called King of, of Two Mile, where they, they shoot rifles out to two miles. That's right. She was the first female to ever win it. But when she won King of One Mile before that, she, um, she sent me that, you know, she some something, something feet. She sent me that amount of money. So people have figured out all different reasons. But it's all fun and, and it's all great. And I appreciate all of it. Let me turn uh, this off because we might play a little music.